Hi folks, Slick Slices here. Um, I'm kind of jumping out of chronological um, order because I try to film knives in the order that I receive them, particularly ones that come from other people. Um, but I'm jumping ahead here. This is actually the very latest knife that I have received. Um, but uh, the, the couple that I got much more... Oh, weeks ago now that I haven't filmed yet but um, I thought I'd start with this and then go on to them because it'll make more um, sense to the s narrative that I'm sort of wanting to tell um, now this is a French knife now when I ever think of classic French knives there are two that come to mind particularly or folding knives anyway the open owls now I love open owls. I think these are great knives. If you got if you're a camper or you go picnicking or anything like that, an open owl is the best knife. Um why? Well because in terms of food prep and so on, it's got a really thin blade and you can make them blooming, blooming sharp very, very easily. Um now this is a carbon one. Carbon. Uh, it says on the blade there. Open L carbon and open L Savoir France carbon. Um, uh, the the yeah. If you're cutting up cheese, sausage, meat, anything at all like that, th these are unbeatable slicers at any price. Um, they'll slice much better than my Rockstead or anything like that. These are real slicers. And, and this is the best bit, if you're on your camping trip or your uh, picnic or whatever and you happen to lose it, well, go and buy another one because they cost buttons. Um, this is one knife that's cheaper in the UK than it is in um, America, which is very, very unusual, but nonetheless, it happens to be true. Um, it's a locking knife, so you have to have a good reason for carrying it in the UK but going camping um, you know, I mean I, I would certainly argue that going for a picnic and having it in my picnic hamper would be a good reason of having it um, that's not um, uh, legal advice because it's the only um, arbiter is the the judge that um, you're arraigned against so Think of that what you will. But personally, I wouldn't have any qualms about uh, taking that to a picnic or um, a camping trip. But I wouldn't be taking it down to the pub, put it that way. Well, the other, there is another actually, which I haven't got, the TA knives. Um, I just don't happen to have one. But the other is Laguiol. Uh, Laguiol uh, is a village in France and it's famous for the making of Laguiol knives. Although, of course, most, um, by number, most Laguiol knives are not made in Laguiol. Um, they're probably by number, the most are made in the Far East these days. Um, those that are made in France are often made in Tier or elsewhere. Um, but there is still, there are still makers in, um, in Laguiol. And uh, this is La Forge de Laguiol is a maker who us who still hand make knives in Laguiole itself. So this is a, this is sort of a traditional Laguiole knife made in Laguiole. So for that to, for, so that much has a great deal of authentic, authenticity. Um, Laguiole knife dates back to um, sometime in the middle of the nineteenth century. Um, it, it it's often exaggerated a little bit because. Something we'll come to in a, in a moment would suggest it was Napoleonic, but it's it's actually later than um, uh, Napoleon. Napoleon, effectively, um, Napoleonic France came to an end in 1815 at the Battle of Waterloo, and he was sent off to exile, um, and this time didn't come back. So that was the end of him. This knife sprung up a little bit later than that. Um, but that's significant for for a couple of reasons. One, for something I'm going to show you in a moment, and secondly, because of where I want to go with my uh, next video after this. So, what have we got with this knife? 
we have got, now I'm going to do the, the measury thing because this is not UK legal to carry. This is an only, it is a slip joint, but it has a, what, three and five eighths inch blade and a cutting edge of three and three eighths, three and five, six, three and seven sixteenths, something like that. It's also very sharp, by the way, I cut myself. Cut myself twice with it, opening it just now. Once on that finger, and once on that finger. But hey ho, there we are. Just what it is. Um, so overall, we're talking about eight inches. Now this is Laguiol, Laguiol art French. So I'm going to turn the ruler around, and unfortunately that means it's upside down. But you know, just what it is. So we've an eleven centimeter handle. Now, uh, la um. Laguiole knives, most French knives are generally um, described by the length of the handle rather than the length of the blade. So it's an 11 centimetre. Now that's, what, four and four and a quarter inches or whatever I said it was. But um, you'll find um, different lengths are all we specified by the, the um, length of the handle. And in terms of the blade length, we're talking about... 95 millimetres, cutting edge of 85, 86 millimetres, which is 10 millimetres too long to be UK legal, which is a crying shame because it's a really nice knife. Um, quite often, if you go into a steak restaurant, you'll find that the steak knives are a fixed blade, yet laguillon. That's perfectly legal, apparently. But take your, your sharp... Um, Laggy all into your steak restaurant and flip it out, and you're liable to be arrested in the UK. Now, very shiny polished blade, and I love that. I like shiny polished blades. Um, and I can't quite read what it says on the tang, and I did read it yesterday, and I can't remember what it said. Um, um, but what I do know, I'll. I'll I'll put the words in on the, the bottom of the screen, but it's T12 steel. I don't know T12 steel. I don't imagine it's a great steel, and it's probably Scandinavian because most French knives tend to have a Scandinavian steel. Um, but who knows? Um, in terms of the handle, we have a pair of nickel silver bolsters, or bolster and cap, or whatever. It's almost a powder horn shape. We'll come back to that. Um, where it varies from tradition is that it's in micarta, blue micarta. Now, um, people often think of micarta as being a modern material, but it's no more modern than the Opinel knives. These started life in the very early part of the 20th century of 190 something. I believe. My Carter was invented by uh, Westinghouse. Westinghouse, um, if you're American, you'll, you'll almost certainly know the name of Westinghouse. Um, Westinghouse and Edison were the two great um, proponents of electricity for domestic usage. Uh, Edison proposed a 12 volt system, which he said was nice and safe. And um, Worcester, uh, Worcester home? Westinghouse, Westinghouse proposed a, an AC system, 110 volts in America. We have 220 to 240 in the UK and Europe. But um, Edison, of course, wanted to prove that um, uh, Westinghouse system was dangerous. And so he uh, did two things. One, he invented or he had, he patented the electric chair. And he went round exhibiting uh, West, two Westinghouse generators and using them to uh, kill various stray cats and dogs. Uh, and if you're a dog lover and a cat lover, as I am, you will always hate Edison as a result. He, of course, very famously executed an elephant um, in uh, New Jersey, I think it was. Um, 
I'm a New Jersey knife guy, you'll correct me on that, no doubt. But it was at a, was it Coney Island or somewhere like that? I can't remember. But anyway, he executed an elephant just to show how dangerous um, Westinghouse's uh, system was. And um, uh, and that's, that's what that was all about. And that's where the electric chair came from as well. Anyway, Westinghouse, that's a lot of drivel, wasn't it? Westinghouse invented uh, micarta. It's, uh, you, you have a substrate, which um, I think in this case is linen. But you can have a cloth, or you can have paper, or um, um, well, different types of cloth really, canvas, burlap, li uh, linen, uh, various things, and you soak them in a, a resin, and it and compress it, and it makes a solid material which you can shape and form. Um, I don't know what Westinghouse invented it for. I don't know if it was as an insulator or something like that. But anyway, he invented it, apparently. Now, also on the handle, you'll see a very traditional thing about uh, laggy all knives. And that is these um, little stud patterns in the, in the form of a cross. So you have one big cross in the middle. Uh, one big stud in the middle and one above it, um, one to each side and then three below it. And the idea was that your um, French uh, shepherd up in the hills, minding his flock on a Sunday morning, couldn't get to church, would, could stick this in the, in the ground and he'd have his little cross and he could um, perform his, um, his, pr his prayers and, and uh, keep himself in with the big guy. Um, I don't know how much truth there is in that. As often with these um, um, stories, um, there's less less truth than um, than you'd think. Um, and here's one. Here's we'll come to a bit now where the the truth is um, more prosaic, I think, than uh, than than uh, than it, than they would like. Now we have on the back of this spring as is very common with um, French knives, we have this uh, carving into the back spring called guillachage um, in, in France. And um, uh, they usually have, you know, some sort of intricate pattern. And this is, this one's that is no, no exception. This is not an expensive knife. This is relatively a budget, the budget end of the, of the laggy old world. You can spend hundreds and hundreds of pounds on one of these. This one, I believe, sells for um, just under a hundred pounds in the UK. Um, at the top, we have uh, a bee. Now, some people call it a fly. Um, I pre perhaps prefer the idea that it's a bee, but it could be either. I mean, who knows? Um, and here's one thing you can, a decent, um, Laguiole knife, the, the bee is forged in the spring, in the back spring, that is, not at the time of year. Um, and it, the bee and the whole of this is one piece on a cheaper Laguiole, which this this isn't. The bee is uh, brazed on um, at the at the end, makes the top of the top of the back spring. The little chap, it is quite nice. It's a nice little feature. Now they they almost always have that. Some are more stylized, some are more realistic. Some have really beautiful carving in it. This one is fairly sort of realistic, but relatively simple. Now it's the history of the bee that's the interesting thing. Traditionally, the story goes that Napoleon um, awarded the bee to the area of Laguiole. In his in recognition of their bravery in fighting for him. Uh, now, as I say, Napoleon um, really ended his his uh, reign in France in eighteen fifteen. The Laguiole knife hadn't been invented, and certainly the bee hadn't appeared as an emblem, and didn't, wouldn't appear as an emblem for another fifty years. So that's just complete rubbish. Now, why they have a bee on the back, I don't know. And I'm not sure that there actually is a reason. I've heard various uh, theories about it. But um, illustrating um, various things like diligence and hard work uh, that bees are renowned for um, and um, their productivity. 
So whether that's the, the real reason, I think it's probably more likely. Uh, it certainly wasn't. Certainly the Napoleon story just doesn't add up because it's... Uh, doesn't fit in the in the time scales. Now, as I say, this knife is very sharp. But one thing, and the, the one reason why I actually shut my finger in it is because um, one area where the um, uh, lagiol lets itself down is that it doesn't um, it doesn't either have a, a stop pin or anything uh, resembling it. Now. In this one, there is just about here a slight uh, rise in the in the back spring, and this here, which you know might be a kick in most traditional knives. See, most traditional knives you have this little kick here that sits on the back spring that stops the edge from hitting the back spring. Now in the lagiol, you don't have that kick. It just doesn't exist. It would be here. This is just flat. Now with that very slight point, a very slight rise in the backspring there, is obviously hitting this because there's a mark where it hits it. But down at the other end, if you can see in there, there's a little mark just Pass my thumb there. Don't know if you can see it. You might be able to. Maybe you can. Maybe you can't. Take my word for it. It's, that's where the blade hits the back spring. Now, if you, if I get that right, you can see just towards the end there. There's a little flat spot on the blade. Uh, it doesn't mean this knife isn't sharp, because it's blooming sharp, let me tell you. But you don't, with a laggy old, want to let it slam shut. One thing you must never, ever do with a laggy old is this. It's lovely to have a nice snap on a blade, but in that, you've got that kick hitting the back spring. If you did that with this, you have the blade hitting the back spring. So when I opened it just now, and I, I kind of let the nail nick slip because it's quite a strong spring, um, I put my finger in the way to stop it from shutting and dulling the blade. Probably not the best move I've made today. That's all I can say. I wouldn't do it. But anyway, I think this is a lovely knife. This long, could you say it as a muskrat clip? Like a, maybe like a toothpick blade? Well, that might give you an idea of where we're going next. But for now, that is the Lagiole. It's come from Paddy. Thank you very much. And if you like this stuff, please remember, thumbs up. And if you want to see more of these uh, videos, then um, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thank you. Bye.